This season preview is brought to you by Manscaped's brand new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. This luxurious lather cleanses and nourishes in just one step. Using coconut water, green tea, and aloe, this non-greasy daily formula is naturally hydrating and rich in antioxidants to revitalize the look and feel of your hair. So head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code SACCITY for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. The new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner from Manscaped. Take care of hair everywhere. The New Orleans Saints, after finishing 9-8 and eight last season, second in the NFC South, just holding on to that final playoff spot again to the NFC side of the playoffs. Uh, they return this year with a new head coach, no more Sean Payton. It's a new era with Dennis Allen as their uh, – as their head coach, new era with the quarterback, Jameis Winston. Uh, last year, obviously, he was there, but he didn't really play that much because uh, he got hurt coming back from a big injury. New era wide receivers, Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, um, maybe oh, Michael. Oh. There, there's a lot of new here, especially on the offense and really with the whole team of the New Orleans Saints. We'll stop off with the, we'll stop at the offense and we will go into what changes have uh, transpired. Aaron, what are you looking forward to most when it comes to this offense? What, what do you have your eye on this season when it comes to Jameis, Jarvis, Olave, Thomas, and you throw up at that? Yeah, I throw up at it because it's a it's a wide receiver group that has been, um, well, the unknown of Chris Olave, the disappointment of Michael Thomas. Uh, the only one thing that I do rely on there is, is Jarvis Landry. I think that's the only guy that I can count on. Um, and I know it may seem funny because – Michael Thomas was one of the best receivers in football just a few years ago, but he hasn't been very reliable lately. And Jarvis Landry has been reliable pretty much his whole career. So um, I expect this offense to continue to do what it's been doing for the past, I don't know, 10 years. When did Alvin Kamara come in the league? Yeah, it's, it's really rely on Alvin Kamara and since 2016, 2017, whenever he came in the league. Um, I, I expect him to rely heavily on Alvin Kamara and then use these wide receivers to – to create big plays and, and especially Jameis loving to go down the field and, and hopefully not get the turnovers that he tried to improve on a, a season ago. And he was improving on before he got the big injury. So um, we can look at the receivers and we can say, yeah, you know, Michael Thomas is back healthy. We expect big things from him. Jarvis Landry is one of the most reliable receivers in football. And then you have the big play ability of Chris Olave. But at the end of the day, this offense runs through 41. And if Alvin Kamara is on the field, then Alvin Kamara is going to be a factor. And if he's not on the field, then this offense is going to struggle because he does so many things for them, not only in the run game, but also in the pass game and in the screen game. And he's so versatile. And I think that's important to have as a quarterback. So uh, I, I don't have my expectations very high for the receivers. And it, it, part of that is because of the, just because of the unknown about is Michael Thomas going to be able to stay healthy? Is What's the connection like between Jameis Winston and a Chris? Olave and, and then you have Jarvis Landry again a new receiver coming into a new system so uh, I, I expect it to take some time to progress and hopefully it gets better as the season goes on but offensively I do think this team has enough weapons though I think they'll be good enough excuse me to the score I'm sorry I'm... <laughs> all good uh, all good I think I think with this team I, I don't I don't know it's like you look at the you look at all their additions I mean that wide receiver group there's a lot arguably what this wide receiver group, although unproven, has the ability to rank up there with the top wide receiver groups in the NFL. If they, re if everyone is clicking and firing on all cylinders, this offense, this wide receiver group, has the ability to be up there with the Bengals, with the Rams, with the Vikings. Like whoa, they have, whoa, they do. Whoa, whoa. If they're fire, Michael Thomas, when firing on all cylinders, just hear me out. If they're you just, all you just did you just did this. You really just did this. If if they're if if they are all hitting on what their true potential is, Michael Thomas being the best has been the best wide receiver, arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL. So if he hits on that, <clears throat> Chris Olave comes in and reaches his potential that now we all have expected him to be. This is so stupid. And then Jarvis Landry does what Jarvis Landry does. This wide receiver group so, could be the best in the NFL so, or up there. This is so stupid. You could say that about every wide receiver group in the NFL if you just by I using your logic. I don't think I, – no, no, no. I don't think you can. I don't think you can because what I'm saying here is that all of these wide receivers' ceiling 
is higher than most of most like you can't i can't go to the jacksonville jaguars and say if everyone is clicking on all cylinders and firing on all cylinders, i said most teams and you picked the worst team i said most teams that you picked the okay. jaguars okay if if okay say if uh okay if the Car- the carolina panthers if the carolina panthers are firing on all cylinders that i can't say that for them oh my god if the can, uh, can i ask you a question can i ask what? you a question why? Because so, we... Wait, 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 wait. Why? Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you this question. I, you used the Carolina Panthers. I thought about it, and I said, you know what? That's a good team to say. DJ Moore is arguably one of the best receivers in football at his peak. We've never seen Robbie, DJ Moore... We've never seen DJ Moore up in that upper echelon of wide receiver. We have not. We have not. That's not DJ that's Moore not has never I'm been saying. a top five wide receiver in the NFL. That's that's how DJ Moore has three straight 1200 yard but, seasons. But what I'm saying is Michael Thomas has finished top five in the NFL before. Yeah, but Jarvis Landry hasn't been that. Jarvis Landry is an 800 yard receiver okay. every year. So, so you're looking at you're you're looking at the overall potential of this team. The wide receiver yes. one of this of the Saints team versus the wide receiver one of that Panthers team. Michael Thomas and DJ Moore. The ceiling for Michael Thomas. We have seen Michael Thomas be a top five wide receiver before. We have not seen that of DJ well, Moore. We're talking so about we the entire wide receiver core, not just but, one guy being a top but, five guy. But you're going down the list. You're going yes. down so, the list. DJ Moore at 1,200 every year. Robbie Anderson's been at 1,200 before. And and LaVisca Chanel, who we thought was going to be good, hey, right? We, the potential hey. is there. That's the, it's the I same see, thing as Chris Olave, Jarvis Landry, and Michael Thomas. I see Chris Olave and, and LaVisca Chanel on similar levels, but the potential for Chris Olave is higher because you look at the the – the scouting report of a Chris Olave. You, you are reaching the, right now. Big I'm not. I'm really you not. Are. I do think. You know what? How, how about this? How about how about this? We let the fans decide in the comments. Let us know if you think the Saints offense ha, or the Saints wide receiver group has the potential to be a top five wide receiver group in the NFL. Um, <laughs> There's no way, Vinny. I can't the potential. Even allow the potential. The potential. I think you named the two worst teams, thirty through thirty-two, damn near. When it comes okay, to receivers. So, okay, so I will go with the like, the Minnesota like just, Vikings. Can I go with the Minnesota Vikings? They wouldn't touch the Minnesota Vikings. Adam Thielen and Jefferson Jefferson alone is better than the three of the Saints combined. I like, think it's very cool. I think the potential, oh if, the, if the Saints God. are clicking on all cylinders, they could be close oh to that God. level. Jarvis Landry has never done what any of those guys have done. His, he, I think you're giving too much credit to Jarvis Landry. And I love Jarvis Landry. He is not a ceiling type guy. He's always between 800 and 1100 yards. That's who he is. And he's older. They don't have the potential to be that. They definitely don't have the potential to be the Bengals. They definitely don't have the potential to be the Rams. They definitely don't have the potential to be (laughs) or the potential that the Steelers have or the Chargers are or the Tampa Bay Bucking. Oh man. I love, I do love me some George Pickens, man. I do love me some George Pickens, but I I would say the same thing though. I would say the same thing though. There is, I would, there is nothing that th- – those guys don't touch them. I would say that the Steelers are almost the perfect comp for this because we've seen Deontay Johnson be up there. We've seen Deontay Johnson be a top five wide receiver before. We, I, The potential for George Pickens is there. So that, that that's, the, that's the equivalent to Chris Olave. And then Jarvis Landry and maybe a Chase Claypool, like so, something around those lines, like that's where I feel like – could so, be, but, but my point is, I picked the, like you, you're arguing the Steelers, and you just like forgot about all the other teams. But if they if they reach, if they reach their ceiling, I think that, that they exists. can do some. I think that they can do some damage. I think they could be they could be very good. And we'll let the Saints fans decide in the comments. Back me up here, Saints fans. Back me up. Uh, let's go to the defense side of the ball. There's some some new additions to this team, uh, including a safety that we were very high on coming into the like with the offseason and the free agents and Marcus May, and also bringing in Tyron Matthew. They traded away Chauncey Gardner-Johnson to the Eagles uh, during on cut day. Um, for this defense, Aaron, what what player are you most excited to see uh, play on the Saints defense? Um, I would say Marcus May, but now, we're, now Marcus May is in jeopardy of being suspended. Yeah. Who knows? How, I mean, obviously it could take a while, but um, he was just arrested. We don't know what's going on with that. Um, I, you know, with, with the saints, I don't think it's one player. And I, I think this is a, this is one of the teams that 
I don't think you look at their defense and you say, oh, this player makes them great. Or this player, they, they have had a consistently good defense for the past decade. And it's been a, a bunch of guys coming in and, and playing their role. When you look outside of Cameron Jordan, who's a really, really good defensive lineman, they don't really have guys that stand out. Demario Davis has been a staple there. Um, Paulson Adebo, like Marshawn Lattimore is a good corner, except when he plays everybody else except for Mike Evans. He's really yeah. good when he plays Mike Evans. But they don't have a bunch of studs. Like, it's not like I look at that team and I'm like, man, they're just loaded. But their defense is always one of the best in football, and especially against the run. And I think that's what's important here. I think they do it as a collective unit, and I don't think that changes. Dennis Allen being the coach, now he's still running that same defense. They're going to have the same success that they've had in the past. I, I think this is one of the more, like, sure things in the NFL. Like, the Saints are going to have a good defense. So you just say it and you just know it and there's no analysis behind it. There's no, they just show up every week and they usually have a good defense. And um, I, I don't think that changes this year. I think they will be one of the better defenses in football. And it's not always, it's not like the elite, but they're not trash. And they're, they're like just better than good. They're just better than good. And they're usually in the top 10. And I think that's where they finish again this year. They're just consistent. They are the Kings. I they mean, are. you look at the you look at the the pieces that they have on that defense. So there's just a lot of consistency there. Obviously, we talk about Tyron Matthew coming in. Uh, Cameron Jordan is one of the. I I I think he's one of the more underrated pass rushers uh, in the NFL, in my opinion. I think he's always he like we just talked about with consistency. Like he's always there in terms of consistency to be a top pass rusher in the league that helps the Saints defense be at the level that they are. Um, you look at the rest of this defense here, uh, Marcus Davenport, uh, DeMar- DeMario Davis. I, I always forget about DeMario Davis. I, I remember him with the Jets, actually. Um, and that's like one of my first memories of him, obviously. Um, there's just a lot of God. There's just a lot of – we use it, we joke around with this term a lot. We, we use it for your guy, Josh Jacobs, a lot. There's just a lot of dogs on this defense. <coughs> and that's what keeps them at that consistent level. Um, what are you watching for most in terms of like the entirety – of the Saints season? Um, I think it's Jameis and how he's kind of progressed uh, over from the injury. I thought he was off to a really good start last year, eight touchdowns, three picks. He didn't, he didn't throw a lot of touchdowns. Um, It wasn't like he was, he just wasn't making the mistakes. So he was playing within himself. They were winning football games. And and I think that's important. Um, I, I think for him, it's about growth. And for the, the growth, to see that kind of growth in him is important for not only his success, but also for the for the Saints' success. And, and I think that that continues this year. And I'm sorry, it's 14 touchdowns to three interceptions, not eight touchdowns. Um, in, yeah, that, was that, in, that, that in first game games. was was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. He, and, and again, Jameis is, is, I don't know, he, he's kind of weird. I'll be honest. He's a weird dude. He always has this energy about him, but... <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it comes off as a little bit of a fake energy, but that it's really not. It's just who he is. Um, and I think people gravitate towards that. He's a fun guy. Uh, but I think he has grown over his time in the NFL. When you lead the league in interceptions, but you also lead the league in yards, um, you learn. You learn something. And and being under, you know, a great coach like um, – well, damn, he already just retired, and I can't even think of his name. Sean right. Payton. Sean Payton. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians. Jesus, he just left. Hey, um, hey. Being under a coach like Bruce Arians who allows people to be who they are and be free and just kind of play, um, I think that helped him. And then coming into a more structured Sean Payton, like, hey, don't turn the ball over. I think he got to see both ends of the spectrum. And he knew, like, okay, I got to find myself somewhere in between there. I still want to be Jameis, but I also got to be smart with the football and kind of be mature about it. So I think that's kind of where he's at now. I think he's at peace. And I think – He's in a good position to be the starter and, and get a lot of wins with the Saints and and take this team deep into the playoffs. I think that I mean I love how you brought up the weird part about Jameis Winston because that's who that that's just that's just who he is. And I mean last season we we a lot of people do still remember that blow up game against Green Bay where he just absolutely torched uh, that Green Bay offense. And I mean that was that's what Saints fans are hoping uh, to see from Jameis Winston. Um, well, I mean, you say not, torched, not, not, but not, he just threw five touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, he only threw for like 200 yards. It was weird. In the, in the game, he only, it wasn't like he went 350 and 
five touchdowns. It was like he threw for 200 yards and five touchdowns, which is efficient to, to say the least. And I don't think that's been part of his game in the past. And I think that's what was so impressive about it. You get a guy that's been kind of sloppy with the football over, over the course of his career. And then he throws, completes 14 passes and he throws five of them for touchdowns. And again, 148 yards in that game. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't throwing the football all over the field last year. It was, he didn't throw for 300 yards one time in the seven games he played. He, the difference was he wasn't turning the football over. He had a five touchdown game and a four touchdown game, uh, but he wasn't turning the football over. And I think that's the most important part. You think, you think that's the same Jameis we see this year? You think that's the same Jameis we see this year? That's where he's just efficient. I think, there, not... I think there's a little bit more risk factor this year. I think he throws a little bit more. Um, I mean, last year he had two games where he threw over 30 passes. Uh, it was the, the Washington game and the Seattle game. So I, I think it's a little bit more this year, but I, I do expect him to be um, more efficient than he was the, the 30 interception game. And we got to remember this dude's only 28 years old. Like he's so young compared to from a quarterback perspective. We're talking about quarterbacks playing until they're 40 now. Jameis Winston can be in the league for 12 more years. Like if you think of it, think about it that way. Yeah. And he's already been in the league for, you know, a number of years. So uh, again, he's seven years in the league and he still could go 12 more if, you know, obviously circumstances permitting. So he's young. Like people don't realize how young he still is. He's yeah. he's still got the, a long way ahead, a long way to go. He's still got Dak Prescott years, right? He's the same age as Dak Prescott. Like that's, he he's fine. Like Jameis is going to be fine. I think Jameis has kind of grown into his own and I expect him to have a pretty good year barring, you know, health. Yeah. Um, let's go into the prop bets. I do have a Jameis Winston prop bet on here of him having over 300, uh, 3,700 and a half passing yards. Uh, that's a minus 10 though. I know how much you love Chris Olave and actually just not like Chris Olave, but I did throw in his plus money here. I wanted to get, get an Alvin Kamara prop bet, but there he doesn't have any like statistical prop bets other than what is um, predicted for week one. Like his season long prop bets are not there. I wonder if that, uh, that obviously has to do with the sus- a suspension looming uh, for him. Maybe. Um, yeah, they would there. Vegas would be scared to lose money. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that, that, that's fair. So uh, I went, I I dug deep and I went to Chris Olave over four and a half Olave receiving touchdowns at plus 100 and then over nine and a half wins for the saints is plus 165. Aaron, what is your locked and loaded saints prop bet? This is easy. It's the over nine and a half wins and it's not close. The Saints team should not be disrespected. Um, I told you guys that I thought if Jameis Winston came back healthy, I think this is one of the best teams in football. And that's even with me hating the wide receivers. Like, um, it's not about them as a talent. It's, it's about them as a football team. And I think although the statistical numbers may not be there for those wide receivers, the the production as far as getting wins will be. I, I, think, this, I think this team is – arguably the NFC South champ this year. I have this New Orleans Saints going 12 and five. Um, I'm pretty sure if I look at my handy dandy notebook, I do have them going 12 and five. They are one of my top teams in the NFL. And I think it's because of, we talked about at the very beginning of this conversation, it's the collective group of the what's on that team. And with Alvin Kamara being there on the field, this is all predicated on him not being suspended, which we do anticipate he is not going to be suspended. That anchor in the backfield, you bring back Mark Ingram, who they've had that kind of connections for a while now. The three wide receivers that you mentioned, arguably the best in football, even though I don't agree with that. I said uh, they could be. I said yeah, they could and, be. And guess what? I could be in the NFL, too. Saying could is a, is a far You're stretch when you got one guy that's been good. You're the like worst. One guy that's really been good on that team was Michael Thomas, and that was three years ago. So. I'm not going to I'm not going to say that they're going to be one of the best receiving core in football, but they do have talent like Michael Thomas is talented. Jarvis Landry is talented. Chris Olave is talented. Um, and two of those three, we've seen it before. So um, they seem to have all the right pieces. They seem to have all the is Dennis Allen going to be able to do what Sean Payton did and make this team a contender. And I think that's kind of where we're at now. Um, and let's not mention, man, they got Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. And that's oh, my, my goodness. Players, Gross. So gross when when we look at the schedule for the for the saints though like 
I'm, I, this is this may be not even a Saints question here, but more of what Baker Mayfield comes in and changes for the Carolina Panthers. Does it make it harder to pick? Like, so I I originally had the Saints sweeping the Panthers this year. I had them winning in week in week three, and then winning in week eighteen against the Carolina Panthers. And that's what I'm thinking about now. Is like, does the new change? Because we did this before the Baker Mayfield trade. Do you do you have them beating Carolina both times? Well. You have Atlanta beating Carolina once. Correct. That tells me all I need to know. So if you have Atlanta beating Carolina once, yeah, the Saints can beat them twice. <laughs> that's fair. That, that's fair. That's Look, fair. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I have, I have the Saints going nine and zero. I have the Saints I, winning their first nine games. I also and, have the Saints going nine and zero. And eight and zero. Sorry, eight and zero. And a lot of it is when they play certain teams. Tampa, they're at home early in the season. Minnesota at at home. No home games to start their season. They are extremely good in their home stadium. And outside of the Arizona game is the only tough game with a good team that's on the road. I have the Saints starting 9-0 and and then struggling down the stretch because then you go at Pittsburgh, at San Francisco, at Tampa Bay, at Cleveland, at Philly – late in the season. And those are games that the New Orleans Saints have struggled with in the past is going on the road. And and that that's usually when their losses come. I have them go at them starting nine and oh, winning three of their last five and uh, go 12 and five. I'm sorry, three of their last seven, three of last eight and going 12 and five. Yeah, I have them. I have them going eight. No, I do have them losing to Baltimore. Uh, in week nine, that's that's my loss that I have for them early on. Uh, but starting eight, no, is definitely something good. And then they beat Pittsburgh. I have them beating the Rams at home. Like you said, the Saints team is very, very good at home. Uh, long travel for the Rams. Um, really, I have them. Man, I, I like this team a lot. I think that they're going to be a good team as well. I also have them um, at 12 and five, definitely getting into the playoffs in this NFC. Um, is that... Is, is how they do at home what, or how they do on the road what your schedule storyline would be for this team? Yeah, if they can win three of eight. I think if they only have to win three of eight, if they or yeah, three of eight. Is that what they have on the road, eight or nine? <laughs> well, they have uh, 17 games now, so I don't know if it's that extra game is a home game or a road game this year. They have eight away games. They yeah, so if they can win three of eight and, I, and then seven of nine at – at home, that's a 10 and seven football team right there. That's a playoff team, no matter what. Like, and that's giving them a, a few rungs down from where I actually have them. But if they can only lose two home games, which is very impossible for the Saints to go six and, you know, six and or seven and two at home, um, and then win three road games, I, I think they have a shot there. And if I had to pick my road games, I'm at Atlanta, at Carolina, like at Pittsburgh. There's game at the, um, at yeah. San Francisco, at Tampa Bay, at Cleveland, at Philly. One of the like one more of those games, and that's three road wins for the for the Saints. And I think at the point they can get to double digit wins. I I have them getting those three road wins at Atlanta, at Carolina, and at Pittsburgh. That's funny that, and I actually have them beating Arizona. I have them beating Arizona in Week Seven. Um, so do I. Those are the, I have them getting four road wins, and yep. it's Arizona, it's Carolina, um, it's Atlanta, and then at the end it's it's Philly. But um, yeah, I think the Saints are going to have a good team. One last question to kind of lead us into what we're going to end up talking about and teasing. We are going to be breaking down the full season predictions uh, later on this week. Uh, so tune into our at Sac City Pod on YouTube to check out our full season predictions for everybody, where the standings go, who's winning the Super Bowl, and maybe the Saints will be around there. Um, heading into the playoffs, though, because this would be obviously a playoff team, uh, you would think. If If not, you have to check out our episode on – yeah, um, they lose against Cleveland and against Philadelphia uh, in week 16 and 17. I, I would assume that's the same for you, right? That's how you have it? Uh, no, I have them beating Philly. Okay, okay, never mind then. I, I, I had two losses and then a win against Carolina. That Does that does that matter going into the playoffs, the two losses and win, going two and two at, outside the bye entering the playoffs? Does I mean, you want to be playing your best football going into the playoffs, but – okay. All right. I'm not a, I'm not a big believer in you have to win your games before you go yep. play. You just have to be playing good football. 
That's fair. That's fair. And if you guys want to check out our preseason power rankings where the Saints land, we will be dropping those on uh, our breakdown of our season preview shows. Uh, to get, we'll start the show basically off with our preseason power rankings to let you guys know where we feel like the Saints and the rest of the 31 NFL teams are uh, in that. 